Good morning. Come with me, please, to Exodus, second book of the Bible, Exodus. We'll start in chapter 25. And while you are turning there, let me remind you, Ecclesiastes 3, verse 1. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven. Season. Here, before we know it, we will uh, be saying things like, season's greetings. Well, before we get to that season, we're in a season right now. Take a moment and think about the seasons of your life. Everybody pretty weary of the corona season? (laughs) Often we could write one word over a season that is a summary of what we have been going through. A season of adversity. God is refining us. Or maybe a season of change, change in relationship, in work, in location. Or a season of growth. God is really showing me something. I believe that all of us can say that throughout 2020, as a collective group, as a congregation, that this has been a season of of challenge for us. Would you agree with that? We are engaged in a series on living life on purpose. And we are saying that we are not just flipping pages on a calendar. We are making a difference. We are living life intentionally on purpose. We are making choices, and we are seizing opportunities. This morning, we want to focus on living life on purpose, and today we want to talk about bringing my gift or offering my gift. Now, let me give a context, and I'll even go so far as to say this is a disclaimer. But this is a context that I want to begin with. What we're doing right now, remember, overarching theme for the year is our God is a way maker, and we are on our way. We are on our journey. So let me use this illustration and analogy. We, this is a pit stop like in an auto race. Now, mostly, we are all about proclaiming Christ, building up people in their faith. But what we've done for these last couple of weeks is we've sort of pulled the car in to the pit stop, and we're talking about the work itself. And in a very short time, this pit stop will be over, and we'll be back into the race. We're so grateful for all throughout um, this national health crisis, we have had guests that have come and they've said, hey, you're meeting? I mean, literally, people pull into the parking lot and said, you're meeting? Great. And they pull in and they park and they come on in. All throughout this time, we've had incredible guests joining us, and we're really glad that you're here. And we encourage you to participate. But I want you to understand, the message today is for a very specific audience. And as we get into the lesson, the identity of that specific audience will become clear. We want to consider and we want to seek how we can be about God's business more efficiently. And so, right now, with your Bibles, open to the book of Exodus. We want to look at three 
texts. They build on each other. They all have the same context. So let's begin. Exodus chapter 25. I encourage you to read along with me. And Yahweh said to Moses, Tell the Israelites to bring me an offering. You are to receive the offering for me from each one whose heart prompts him to give. These are the offerings you are to receive from them. Gold, silver, and bronze. Blue, purple, and scarlet yarn, and fine linen. Goat hair, ram skins dyed red, and hides of sea cows. Acacia wood, olive oil for the light, spices for the anointing oil, and for the fragrant incense. And onyx stones and other gems to be mounted on the ephod and breastpiece then have them make a sanctuary for me, and I will dwell among them. Make this tabernacle and all its furnishings exactly like the pattern I will show you. Now come with me to Exodus 35, picking up at verse 4. Moses said to the whole Israelite community, This is what Yahweh has commanded. From what you have, take an offering for Yahweh. Everyone who is willing is to bring to Yahweh an offering of gold, silver, and bronze, blue, purple, and scarlet yarn, and fine linen, goat hair, ram skins dyed red, and hides of sea cows, acacia wood, olive oil for the light, spices for the anointing oil, and for the fragrant incense, and onyx stones, and other gems to be mounted on the ephod and breastplate. Stop right there. Are you impressed by how Moses said it verbatim? Verse 10. All who are skilled among you are to come and make everything Yahweh has commanded. The tabernacle with its tent and its covering, clasps, frames, crossbars, posts, and base. The ark with its pole and the atonement cover and the curtain that shields it. The table with its poles and all its articles and the bread of the presence. The lampstand, that is, for light, with its accessories, lamps and oil for the light. The altar of incense, with its poles, the anointing oil, and the fragrant incense. The curtain for the doorway at the entrance to the tabernacle. The altar of burnt offering, with its bronze grating, its poles, and all its utensils. The bronze basin, with its stand. The curtains of the courtyard, with its posts and base. And the curtain for the entrance to the courtyard, the tent pegs for the tabernacle and for the courtyard, and their ropes. The woven garments worn for ministering in the sanctuary, both the sacred garments for Aaron and the priest, and the garments for his sons when they serve as priests. Then the whole Israelite community withdrew from Moses' presence. And everyone who was willing and whose heart was stirred within him came and brought an offering to Yahweh for the work on the tent of meeting, for all its service and for the sacred garments. All who were willing, men and women alike, came and brought gold jewelry of all kinds, brooches, earrings, rings, and ornaments. They all presented their gold as a 
wave offering to the Lord. Everyone who had blue, purple, or scarlet yarn, or fine linen, or goat hair, ram skins dyed red, or hides of sea cows brought them. Those presenting an offering of silver or bronze brought it as an offering to Yahweh. And everyone who had acacia wood for any part of the work brought it. Every skilled woman spun with her hands and brought what she had spun, blue, purple, or scarlet yarn, or fine linen. And all the women who were willing and had the skill spun the goat hair. The leaders brought onyx stones and other gems to be mounted on the ephod and breastpiece. They also brought spices and olive oil for the light and for the anointing oil and for the fragrant incense. All the Israelite men and women who were willing brought to the Lord free will offerings for all the work Yahweh, through Moses, had commanded them to do. Wow. And then, chapter 36, verses 2 through 7. Then Moses summoned Baziel and Aholiab and every skilled person to whom Yahweh had given ability and who was willing to to come and do the work. They received from Moses all the offerings the Israelites had brought to carry out the work of constructing the sanctuary. And the people continued to bring free will offerings morning after morning. So all the skilled craftsmen who were doing all the work on the sanctuary left their work and said to Moses, the people are bringing more than enough for doing the work of Yahweh that he commanded to be done. Then Moses gave an order, and they sent this word throughout the camp. No man or woman is to make anything else as an offering for the sanctuary. And so the people were restrained from bringing more because what they already had was more than enough to do all the work. That's the word of the Lord. I don't know about you, but I absolutely love reading the places in God's word, especially in the Old Testament. I love reading the places where God's people got it right. Before we spend some time in the word, let's take a moment first and pray. Father, we thank you for the incredible privilege of calling you Father. How could our heart, how could our mind comprehend this? Without the word that you've given us to guide us, how we thank you, Father, for answered prayer. How we thank you for your incredible love, for your greatness. and for that great love that rests upon us. Today, Lord, as we consider this matter of, of bringing our gift, we pray that your word would be effective, that it would be like a hammer breaking bondage, that it would be like a mirror showing us our true selves. And we thank you. We thank you, Lord, that you are at work in us to bring us to do your will and your good pleasure. May we continue now to worship you, even now in the proclamation of your word and your truth. These things we pray together in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Honestly, isn't this a great text? We might even say, wow, that is really cool. I would call this a very successful funding campaign. An amazing move of God's people seized by an opportunity 
and seized by generosity. So let's go back into the passage and let's frame what God was doing then and look and apply what God is doing now so we can have our feet firmly planted on God's word. There are four main thoughts, and I've made sure <laughs> that I got them right. Four thoughts, and everyone should have a slide this Lord's Day. We begin with this. First, I want you to notice the request for generosity. The context of this passage. The children of Israel have been led out of Egyptian bondage by God's mighty hand through his servant Moses. Now, the people have already experienced God's mighty workings through the ten plagues designed to show that Yahovah, that Yahweh alone is God, and that the Egyptian gods are nothing. And God has shown himself great and mighty and awesome. And then he has delivered his people and brought them out of Egyptian bondage. And as later the Apostle Paul would observe, he brought them out and he baptized them by deliverance through the Red Sea. They had been slaves, and when they came out the other side, now they are a free people, and they are God's special possession. And God is leading them. God has freed them. And now, look at it, what it is that God is calling them to do. I want you to bring an offering. And this request for generosity comes in the context of actual thankfulness. That is, He's asking people who have had a little bit of time to think and process what it means to be redeemed, to be saved, to be literally saved out of bondage and to be set free. The request for generosity comes out of the context of thankfulness. I want you to notice the command, go back to chapter 35 and look at verse 4. So Moses said to the whole Israelite community, this is what the Lord, all capitals, that is the personal name of God, this is what Yahweh has commanded. It is a command by God. Now, that is a pretty heavy card to play. If this opportunity is of God, we have to seize the opportunity. I want you to notice the simplicity of the request. God simply says, from what you have, bring an offering to the Lord. The simplicity of the request. He doesn't say, if this, then this, or if you fall into this category. He just says, bring an offering. He doesn't say, bring a tithe. He says, bring an offering. Throughout the text, it is frequently identified specifically as a free will offering. But I love the fact that in verse 22, it is specifically called a wave offering. I love this. I love the, the little details of God's word. All throughout the Old Testament, we read about a wave offering and a heave offering. And often, these offerings were done at the same time. Now, a wave offering is whatever it was that was being offered, there was a back and forth motion with it. This way, this was the wave offering. 
And the heave offering was lifted this way. So when we see all throughout the Old Testament the wave offering and the heave offering, what we actually are seeing is a foreshadowing of the cross. They were making a cross in the actions of what they are presenting. But right here specifically, there, there's, something, there's something even more specific. The idea of a wave offering is you're putting it on display. Now, immediately, immediately we go to the, you know, well, doesn't the Bible say don't your, let your left hand know what your right hand is doing? And, uh, you know, it's nobody else's business what I give. Listen, their heart, their mind, their attitude, they were stirred to give. And God said, I'm asking for your best. I'm asking for gold, silver, bronze. I'm asking for ram's hair that's been dyed red. I'm asking for the hides of sea cows. I'm asking for acacia wood. I'm asking for onyx stones. I'm asking for the best. And they were like, yeah, man, give me the opportunity. And then the work, and they wanted to see it. This is so great. This is so cool. And they weren't ashamed. They weren't ashamed of their offering. And so they didn't mind not only the Lord seeing it, they weren't ashamed of anybody else seeing it either. A wave offering. Again, I want you to note, the amount of the offering, not specified. Anyone who is willing. Not everyone gave. I want you to notice, the goal is very specific. The description is very specific. The amount to give, not specified. Totally open. The request for generosity. And then, I want you to notice the reason for the generosity. Beginning in verse 10, he says, All who are skilled among you, are to come and make everything that the Lord has commanded. And down through verse 19, the great detail of what would be built. And I also want you to notice that in this, there's the mindset of what it is that God is going to be doing through all of this. God gives a reason. Now, they don't, as of yet, have the complete picture. But as we've already noted, Moses, he's keyed into the fact of there's a pattern here. And we're going to do it exactly as God has said. Now, in addition to the reasons for generosity, which obviously go back to what God has done for us, and that we are thankful that we have been saved and, and set free, it's interesting that there is a roadblock to generosity. Look at verse 20. Then the whole Israelite community withdrew from Moses' presence. What a risk. Here's what the Lord commands. Here's what we want. Here's what God wants. Here's what he's calling for. And everybody goes, okay. And then they go home. There's no, and now let's stand and sing. Uh, there's no dismissal prayer. They hear the word and they go. But what if they forget? What if they become preoccupied with just the, the, the daily stuff? What if they forget? Now, 
you know, that really is the challenge for every preacher, every sermon. I can remember my dad telling me about not a gospel meeting, not a special sermon, but one lesson that the old preacher at the Lord's Church in Fulton, Mississippi, when my dad was a young Christian. Returning from the war after my mom and dad were married, and there in very familiar surroundings, but yet my dad is a new Christian. This was kind of new for him. He said, and I never forgot it. He said, the preacher preached his heart out. And at the end of the lesson, he said, I'm serious. I want you to think about it. Go home. No invitation song. No invitation extended. No closing prayer. He said, I don't want you to talk to a person. Go. Go to the parking lot. Get in your car. Go home. And come back tonight. My dad said, I never forgot that. And by extension, I haven't forgotten it either. This could be viewed as a roadblock. He sends them away. But yet, there is a context for this. In all of the spaces and the verses that we didn't read, there is a Sabbath. And the reason why they go home is so that they can observe that Sabbath. That means that this command is given by God on a Friday afternoon. They go home and Sabbath begins at sundown on Friday. They have all of the Sabbath to think about this. And in fact, the instructions are, on this Sabbath, don't even, don't even build a fire. Don't even stoke a fire that you had previously built. Just think about it. And then come back with your response. But what if they forget? What if they decide that now's not a good time? What if they go home and they, and they sit there and they think and they say, you know, I really had something else in mind for those sea cow skins. I really, really had my heart set on a six-chair dining room set made out of acacia wood. What if they forget? Well, let's look at the response. The response to the generosity. Still in chapter 35, come with me to verse 21. And everyone who was willing and whose heart moved him came and brought an offering to the Lord for the work on the tent of meeting and all its service and for the sacred garments. Verse 22, all who were willing, men and women alike, came and brought gold jewelry of all kinds, brooches, earrings, rings, and ornaments. They all presented their gold as a wave offering to the Lord. Verse 23, everyone who had blue, purple, or scarlet yarn, or fine linen, or goat hair, ram skins dyed red, hides of sea cows brought them. Come down to verse 26. Every skilled woman spun with her hands and brought what she had spun, blue, purple, or scarlet yarn and fine linen. Come down to verse 29. All the Israelite men and women who were willing brought to Yahweh a free will offering. 
Did you notice how many times in the text it says that their heart was stirred? They were stirred in their heart to give. They were moved in their heart to give in this particular way. Question. Are you stirred in your heart? Whoa, dude, you're just laying this on me right now. Give me some time to think about it. All right, you've got some time to think about it. But here's the question. I want you to notice that there is a connection between the command and the obedience, and it travels from the head through the heart. They were stirred in their heart. They were specific in their gift. I want, you, I want you to notice four things. Four things related to being very uh, stirred in the heart. Number one, notice that it is specific hearts. Not everyone gave, but those who were stirred in their heart gave. Men and women gave. They were moved to give. And then second, I really want you to note that God is very specific in what He asks for. He asks for the very best. He asks for gold, silver, bronze. Nothing less than that in terms of metals. And then he asks for these things that are exquisite, rare, and valuable. They all will have their purpose and their place. Specific hearts, specific gifts requested, and then note that there is a specific objective that I may dwell among them. Did you notice the fact? God does not say, bring these gifts and I will build the sanctuary. He says, bring the gifts so that they may build a sanctuary for me. The tabernacle. This incredible, portable temple. This indoor worship structure. Do you know that this is the very first time that people anywhere will worship the one true God indoors? Every altar that's ever been built, every prayer that has ever been lifted up has all been outside. But there is an imagery here, and it's found in the language, that I may dwell among them, that my tent can be among their tents. I always love the illustration. It works for my brain. If you were a tour guide, and you were bringing along a group of Ammonites and uh, taking them on a tour through the Israelite camp, the camp was laid out very specifically. There were certain tribes to the north, south, east, and west. And so, tour guide might go along and say, these over here, these are the tents of the tribe of Gad. And these over here, these are the tents of the tribe of Ephraim. And these over here, these are the tents of Dan. And, and right here, right here, right in the middle, this is the tent of our God. Our God, He lives with us. He dwells among us. That is the specific instructions. That is the specific objective that I may dwell among them. And then there are specific instructions that are given. There are incredible details that are given. And mark it down. God is in the details. Specific hearts, specific gifts requested, 
a specific objection, uh, objective, and specific instructions, but no specific amount. Well, where did they get all this? To be able to give like this, where did it all come from? Well, if you want to hold your finger at Exodus 35, go back to Exodus chapter 12. Exodus chapter 12 and verse 35. There the instructions are given on the night of the Passover when God has delivered them. And his instructions were, you are to eat this meal standing up with your staff in your hand and your shoes on your feet and your belt tight around your waist, ready to move at the trumpet's call because this is the night of deliverance. And as they are going out, God gives the instructions, you ask of your taskmasters. You demand from those who held you in bondage. You ask of all the people of Egypt. Retribution. As they left. And they gave it. Now, here's what I want you to think about. How cool is that? How cool is that to think that God gave you something a month ago, three months ago, six months ago, a year ago, so that I could give it back to him? That's amazing. Now, there is, I want you also to notice, a period of time for the giving. There is a steady stream of giving. There is a duration to the giving. It goes on and on again. Look again at uh, 36 verse 3. They received from Moses, ongoing verb action. They received from Moses all the offerings the Israelites had brought to carry out the work of constructing the sanctuary, and the people continued to bring free will offerings morning after morning. You get that? So there's a period of time, and Moses receives it, and then he gives it, and he turns it over to the skilled uh, workers. So that they're, I mean, it, it's not like um, a delayed process. They immediately get to work. And as more starts coming, and Moses keeps giving it to the workers, remember, it's the workers who say, <laughs> Tell them to stop. They're they're stumbling over the abundance and the bounty, and they're saying, tell them to, to quit. There's more than enough. There's more than enough in order to do the work that God has called us to do. I want you to notice that the miraculous... is in the collective. Each individual brought their gift. But the miracle is in the collective. The combined results. You know what this is? when we look at the stirred hearts, it's the difference between being interested and being involved. What a thrilling thing to be involved. There is nothing greater than being involved in the work that God is doing. Nothing greater than when you see it the need, and then the ability to meet the need. Those are life's opportunities. And when you see one, you seize it. You take hold of it. As we bring this to a close today, and we're thinking about us now, 
we, the new spiritual Israel, and while God has not called us to build him a physical house wherein he may dwell, he has provided that for us. But still, he calls us to be engaged, to be involved, and not just interested. Not to be just bystanders, but to be involved. And as his people, who have even more to be thankful for than did the generation of Moses' day. That was a great place for an amen. Would you agree that on this side of the cross, we have more to be thankful for than the generation of Moses' day? And remember, uh, generosity comes out of the context of thankfulness. What could we do? What could we do if we had a mindset of giving this freely? Wouldn't it be great? Wouldn't it be great to hear proclaimed from the pulpit, all right, y'all got to stop. We've got more than we can even work with. As we bring this to a close, I want to ask a couple of questions. And and I'll tell you, I'm asking these questions of myself. Notice the sequence. God gave the command on a Friday. They have a Sabbath to think about it. So when did they start bringing their gifts to the Lord? On the first day of the week. Between now and next Sunday, take some time to rest, Take some time to reflect. Give yourself a Sabbath and think about what the Lord is asking of us. And during this week, I want you to think of three questions. Here's the first one. What is the maximum that I can even imagine to give? What's the maximum that I can even imagine to begin to give? Here's the second question. How can I make between now and the end of the year, how can I make a contribution far more than any I have ever made before? Third, between now and the end of the year, what could you do? I'm not doing this... uh, for any other reason but to let it be a wave offering. And to set a good example. Tammy doesn't even know. (laughs) I'm going to do this. We have it set up. Uh, Our giving, we give through Share Faith. We give online and it's set up. It comes out every Sunday morning. Immediately after midnight on Sunday, my phone goes ding, and the notification comes up, your share faith donation, your contribution has been sent to the Spring Street account. 
Y'all know that uh, Tammy got to go on a little trip. And because of COVID, we put together two little trips that had been planned and uh, scheduled. One, she got to spend some time with her college roommates. And then the other was she got to spend some time with her sister, and she got to, they got to go see um, their aunt. And, you know, you, you have to plan for and you have to purpose those things. And that was really, really good. And that was a gift I loved and was happy to give to my wife. What Tammy doesn't know is that I had set aside a little bit of funds that she doesn't know about. And, um, well, long story short, we're starting. We're giving that amount. I'm giving that to the Lord right now. And to set an example, let it be a wave offering. And please, it's only to say, this is real. The lesson's yours.